In news this week, 88 Christians kidnapped by Islamic State in Libya. 2,000 Christian teachers in Kenya are afraid to go to work. And the child preachers of Brazil. This is In Focus Christian News and Current Affairs. Grave fears are being held for the safety of 88 Eritrean Christians kidnapped by the Islamic State terror group in Libya. The Christians were part of a group of Eritreans and Egyptians who apparently entered Libya with the intention to cross the Mediterranean into Europe. According to Fox News, the IS militia divided Christians from Muslims and men from women and drove each group away to unknown destinations in trucks. Three of the Christian men managed to escape. IS in Libya has previously targeted Christians and on two occasions earlier this year released videos of Christians being beheaded. Also under threat from the IS terror group is what's believed by many to be the resting place of the biblical prophet Nahum. According to Haaretz, the 2,700-year-old tomb in the Iraqi city of al Kosh has been looked after by a Christian family since the last Jews fled the area in the 1950s. But discussions about restoring the tomb and the synagogue surrounding it have ground to a halt as the region is menaced by Islamic State. In other regions occupied by IS, churches and other religious monuments have been systematically destroyed. 95 government schools in northern Kenya have been shut down and another 500 are considering their options after 2,000 Christian teachers refused to work, citing security concerns. In April this year, Al-Shabaab gunmen killed 148 people at the Garissa University College, singling out Christians during their killing spree. According to Religion News, the majority of school teachers in Kenya's Muslim-majority North are Christians, who are sometimes threatened by Al-Shabaab. The situation has also affected Christian schools, as teachers are lured away by the higher wage offers made by government schools desperate to stay open. Dozens of committed and active Christians were among the 519 Australians who received Queen's Birthday honours earlier this month. Awardees included high-profile Christians such as Reverend Keith Garner, CEO of Wesley Mission, and Reverend Graham Long, who heads up the Wayside Chapel in Sydney's King's Cross. But the honours list also includes the Quiet Achievers, whose faith informs their work as professionals, volunteers and active church members. Two nurses who have gone above and beyond the call of duty are due to receive Order of Australia medals. John Sandberg and Marge Batchelor have both lent their professional skills to Open Heart International, an international medical outreach program coordinated by Sydney Adventist Hospital. Queen's birthday celebrations were also held in Solomon Islands this month, providing the opportunity for Governor-General Sir Frank Kabui to make an official speech that has been described as both short and sharp. Sir Frank expressed his concern about corruption in Solomon Islands, but noted that the problem is as old as humanity itself. He said to the audience, which included the Prime Minister and other senior dignitaries, that corruption is a problem of the human heart, which can only be solved by God's intervention. Sir Frank called on those present to commit themselves to God and to recognize that his wisdom is superior to the wisdom of this world. The Mediterranean diet has been around since biblical times and is widely recognized as being associated with long life and positive health outcomes. But the United Nations, which officially lists the Mediterranean diet as part of humanity's cultural heritage, says eating patterns in Mediterranean countries are changing and the health consequences are being felt. The UN is concerned that the move away from homegrown produce and the increased consumption of imported meats and dairy is leading to an increase in lifestyle diseases such as obesity, diabetes and heart disease. What they've shown in one of the studies, the Leon Diet Heart Study, mm. is that men who've had a heart attack, mm. if they're placed on the Mediterranean diet, it is more effective than medication okay. or a low-fat diet mm. to prevent a second heart attack. In no. fact, the men had a 70% mm. lower risk. Health experts around the world are looking for ways to encourage people to better appreciate the value of their food heritage. 
As Latin America's religious balance shifts away from Catholicism, Brazil's booming assemblies of God churches are seeing a new generation of child preachers come to prominence. Essas crianças são a igreja de agora. A igreja que Deus levantou para pregar o evangelho nas escolas. According to the New York Times magazine, claims are being made that thousands of child preachers are now operating in Brazil, conducting public evangelism series and healing meetings. Naturally, there are critics who claim the children are being exploited but the detractors don't appear to be dampening the enthusiasm of the thousands who say they're blessed by these young people's ministries. A church group in Jamaica has attracted media attention with their generous efforts to renovate the home of a 96-year-old neighbour. According to the Jamaica Observer, Mary Dennison's timber home in Irwin, Montego Bay, was in desperate need of repair and leaked whenever it rained. Seventh-day Adventist church members from the Irwin congregation raised money for building materials and got to work, replacing rotten weatherboards and repairing the roof and floor. Theirs is only a small church with limited finances, so the project had to be conducted in phases. Nevertheless, Miss Dennison was pleasantly surprised to see the group return to finish what they had started and is overjoyed at the improvements they've made. People will do all kinds of unusual things to raise funds for a good cause, but playing the organ non-stop for three hours? Well, that just may be a brand new strategy. Twenty-two organ players tag-teamed the organ marathon. The youngest was seven years old and the oldest was 90. The organ marathon was hosted by the Avondale Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church in New South Wales and raised $3,000 that will go towards the rebuilding of cyclone-devastated communities in Vanuatu. Iowa woman Lillian Weber had a goal to sew 1,000 dresses for African girls who needed them before her 100th birthday. 1,000 dresses might seem like an ambitious number, but by the time Miss Weber's centenary had arrived, she'd smashed her goal and is currently approaching 1,100 dresses. Little Dresses for Africa is a Christian charity focused on the needs of African girls, particularly AIDS orphans, who have been left with the responsibility of looking after their younger siblings. The standard dress pattern is based on the simple idea of repurposing pillowcases, a common and affordable item that's available in a wide variety of fabrics, colours and sizes. And that's this week's news. For more current affairs, lifestyle and inspirational video segments, visit our website, record.net.au. I'll see you next time. God bless.